Hey guys, so I wanted to show you uh, what we are getting in the Model X, so I thought I'd just show you with the configurator itself. So here we go. We are getting a blue one um, with the regular wheels, slipstream wheels, and the white interior. Um, and then slipping down here, it's going to be the 100D. No performance stuff. And the layout, we are going for the seven seater, um, which I know the six seater is more popular. Um, besides being um, three thousand dollars more, um, probably due to the complexity of the middle two seats, uh, I'll explain later. I'll, I'll do um, more explanation and stuff of um, you know why why the Model X and why the features we're getting. Uh, we are getting premium upgrades package. Um, if you want any premium upgrades, you have to get them all because they're now all lumped together. And we are getting enhanced autopilot. Um, I'm not getting full self-driving capability, at least not yet. Um, so, and the difference will be a thousand dollars if we end up upgrading to that in the future. Um, anyway, yeah. So uh, that's we. That's what we're getting. I'm pretty excited about it. it we're, our delivery is supposed to be in March, and uh, I hope that works out because um, that sort of dictates whether we get the Tesla financing and stuff. So anyway, yeah, so uh, let's talk about why the options that we're getting. So it's basically a Bjorn mobile, except different seat configuration. Um, it's actually, it's interesting how difficult it is to decide on a paint color. I uh, went back and forth. Black would be, um, black is very refined and stuff, although, I mean, the Model X already looks a little bit bulbous, so I, th I think the actual other colors make it look a little bit more streamlined, but that's all subjective. Um, and there's a lot of road dirt here in Michigan because, uh, you know, we get snow and there's salt and all that kind of stuff, so keeping a black car looking good would be just ridiculous. Um, so, and I thought about Midnight Silver, it just wasn't really speaking to me, um, when, when it came down to it. Red was cool, but, mm, just, just didn't really fit. Uh, and then, let's see, the white, right would have been pretty, but we were going to get white seats, and I, I, you know, I didn't want to do that. Plus, white is like $1,500. Uh, what else? I think those are the most, most of them. Oh, Obsidian Black, yeah. Silver. Silver was cool, but um, Lacey didn't really like silver as much. Um, yeah, so anyway, we went with blue. Um, uh, standard wheels, slipstream wheels, 20 inch. I'm more about efficiency than like super pizzazzy. I like uh, I like keeping the range of the vehicle. And then interior, yeah, so debated about like this. I actually kind of like the cream, um, but uh, we decided we didn't really want to go with the tan base color. so. It's either going to be white or black. I'm pretty happy with the way black is now. I have the black leather in the Model S. Now there's no leather. It's all the whatever material they use. Um, so the white or the black would have been this the same stuff with stain resistance. Um, from the uh, internet, uh, yeah, YouTube videos and stuff about the bright white seats and stuff. Bjorn probably shows the most war the most wear on the whites, which I was a little worried about, especially with the blue jeans. Um, they, it gets a little discolored, and of course, looking at you know like Tesla's videos and and having kids and stuff, uh, they make some good points in their video, including that you know with white you actually see dirt a little bit f faster, so you actually take care of it sooner. So the seats are probably actually cleaner. Uh, so I went back and forth and I kind of realized like, well, black actually doesn't look that clean either, even though it is dark and it's, and it is, it's dark. So the interior is kind of a little bit more subdued. Um, these are all pretty minor things, but that was one of the reasons I got the lighter Alcantara in my Model S on the ceiling, just kind of, so it little brightens it up a little bit. Now it'll be the opposite. The top is actually black, but there's more windows in the top. I don't, I didn't have any sunroof. And then, um, yeah, so we're getting the white and it makes me nervous. I, th I thought like, I really don't want to worry about like, um, if it's getting dirty cause that, I don't know, it kind of stresses me out and I thought I would worry about it too much if I had white, but you know, everything seems to indicate that it's very stain resistant and you can get seat covers for the 
kids areas if needed or keep a towel under the car seat or something as long as it's strapped in correctly yeah so it's like you know it's a unique item it really gives a bright airy feel to the inside so let's just do it so we'll see how it goes here in snowy dirty Michigan at least in the winter uh, 100D already talked about that you know whether to get all-wheel drive is not even an issue because they don't have um, rear-wheel drive anymore for Model X okay interior layout yeah so we're getting the seven seat interior for a number of reasons one to max out seating capacity um, two so that all the rear seats fold flat because we haul stuff here and there um, bigger items and so I didn't I didn't want the seats that just go forward yeah I mean you can get that with the five seat interior but um, we want the option of um, hauling additional people and um, Initially, I thought, you know, it would be nice to have the six seat because with two, you could put two car seats in the second row, one on each end. And then, you know, if you have another kid or a dog, they can actually walk past that and get into the third row. But that's actually not true with um, rear facing seats, car seats. So with rear facing, the, the head of the car seat actually goes all the way to the front, to the back of the front seat. So it blocks that entire area. A small kid could um, could crawl under that, but it's essentially unusable. Um, so, if it's unusable, we may as well have the full row. And um, once one kid is older, so when Cordelia is older and can either buckle herself in or use a forward facing, uh, we can either have rear facing and forward facing um, in the second row, or put or put. Uh, the older car seat in the back and then have the uh, you know have one seat one one middle row seat down so there's still accessibility accessibility to the back so we'll see I don't know I'm sure there's gonna be inconveniences certain inconveniences about it but it would be cool if the middle seat was actually removable that would be I think there are cars that do that but I forget which one maybe the Toyota Highlander I'm not sure Anyway, um, also the six seat interior is three grand more. Since we're using it as a people hauler and family hauler, we got the seven seats. So premium upgrades, we, we did that and that was primarily for, um, I. one of the things I use all the time in the Model S is the steering wheel heater. So I really like the Sub-Zero package. Um, so that and then also, oh, the tow hitch. I wanted the tow hitch uh, and the HEPA filter the um the extra because i'm really looking forward to using um what's it called biohazard no bioweapon defense mode when i'm like following a diesel vehicle and it makes you know makes it smell or somebody that's smoking in, in the car in front of you and it gets into your your uh, ac or something so i'm looking forward to be able to like just knocking out odors really fast as well as nauseous gases so i would have done those things separately but you can't so that it also comes with the uh, auto presenting doors um xm satellite radio cap capability let's see what else does it come with um the big 12 speaker audio system so that'll be cool i'm not an audiophile but that's that'll be cool and then enhanced autopilot um i use autopilot all the time uh it, it is actually more convenient Features that I use all the time, I'm okay paying for. I guess my worry is like buying stuff and then buying features or upgrades and then not just not being that useful. Um, but anyway, Autopilot One, I, I use a ton. Back then when I got it, it was only 2,500. So now Enhanced Autopilot is 5,000, but it is with the promise that it's gonna do a lot of stuff, like basically drive itself on, on the freeways, like even interchanging freeways. Uh, so that'll be a significant improvement from Autopilot 1. But anyway, I held off on full self-driving capability. Uh, you, may as, you may have noticed that the cross-country uh, fully self-driving demonstration from New York to Los Angeles, or the other way around, did not happen um, this winter, which, or at least in December when Musk said it was going to happen. And um, I think... I think the timeline for full self-driving abilities is quite delayed. Um, I think it's going to be still several years before that comes out. It just wouldn't make sense to fork out the extra dough for it and then 
you know, what if it takes five years or something and we have a different vehicle? I don't know. Um, then we would have paid for it and never used it. So the difference between paying for it now, which is 3000 and paying for it later, which is 4000 is $1,000. So if it really comes out and is really self-driving capability and, you know, you can legally use this to like, you know, the car, I could drive to work and then the car could drive itself back, which would basically eliminate the need for a second vehicle. You know, it's worth the extra thousand. So anyway, that is on the back burner. So that is uh, why we're getting the Model S um, and the features that we're getting and why we're getting those features. Again, um, as to why we're getting the Model S now, which has to do with uh, the tax credit, uh, unlimited supercharging, I have a previous video about that, so check that out if you're interested. And if you're trying to figure out when you wanna pull the trigger for something like this, um, super excited to uh, get get the SUV, the Model X. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what the differences are just in the experience. You know, the height of things like, you know, oh, maybe the, the screen's a little bit closer, better oriented for, for use, or, you know, buttons here and there, lights, whatever, all that kind of stuff. I'm really excited about seeing what my initial impressions are going from driving a Model S for, it'll be, I don't know, two and a half years to uh, a Model X. Um, yeah, and there's gonna be a lot of videos about it. Hopefully we can do some road trips because it's such a cool experience doing that. Yeah, I can't think of any else, anything else to say. These videos always end up quite a bit longer than I anticipate. <laughs> um, but, oh, and uh, thank you to those of you who have used my referral link. Um, I have used all five of mine. I know other people have locked, like, or unlocked different levels of their um, referral code, so they, you know, they keep getting more and more referrals to use. I'm not really sure how you do that. I don't know if you have to have your first five delivered, in which case it doesn't matter because we're going to be in a different um, time period of the referral zone. But so I don't know if I have more referrals to use or not. Um, but anyway, thank you to those who have used them. I should have enough to go to the next um, unveiling um, event, which uh, is gonna be is so awesome. It was, um, yeah, that would just be awesome. Yeah, hopefully this was interesting. Um, comments, questions, feel, please feel free to um, uh, leave that below. Um, subscribe or like, uh, share the video, and um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.